this short video presentation I'll show you how to use an autoclave. The autoclave you see here consists of eight different parts. We have six steel parts and two Teflon parts. The steel contains the main body, which is the body itself, and the lid, and then there's a base plate and an insert for the lid. On top of that we have a thin foil here. This is called the corrosion foil. This is to avoid corroding the burst diaphragm. So this is the one actually holding the pressure inside. The reaction itself takes place inside the Teflon vessel here. So we have here a Teflon linen, which is like a main body and a lid. To assemble the setup, we have the main body, and we have the base here. And you see the base has this cutting. This has to face this way inside the main body. So I can put it inside. It fits nicely, and then I can insert the Teflon insert. So this fits very snugly, and it goes very, very tight. Now you can add your sample inside here, and you have to make sure that you never fill this body more than halfway. So you can only fill it 50% of the volume of the Teflon. When you put in your sample, you can put on the lid, like this, and then you have to take the corrosion foil. Now these two foils might look identical, but one is thinner, and you can actually hear that you can buckle it much more easily. So this one goes on top. That's the corrosion foil. So if anything is leaking from inside the Teflon vessel, this is going to attack the corrosion foil and not the burst diaphragm. So the burst diaphragm goes on top, and this is actually the one that ensures the pressure inside the vessel. The first lid insertion here, it has a hole, and through this hole, the Teflon will actually be pushed if the pressure inside gets too high. So if the pressure inside the body gets too high, the burst diaphragm will break, and the Teflon will go through this hole, and then the pressure will be reduced so that no explosion will take place. Okay, now I only me need the lid, uh, and this has a very fine thread, and to easily assemble and disassemble, we take a small amount of uh, high temperature paste to grease the lid. So I just need a very small amount, and I just basically need to grease the initial part of the lid here, so that once I start to screw these things together, it will actually grease the whole thread. So the thread is quite long, so it takes quite a while to fix the two together. So you can't take it, tighten it completely just by your hands, but you can make it quite tight. But to just make sure that it's really tight, we have a special tool that we use to tighten the last bit. So first you tighten as much as you can with your hands. Then we have this special base plate with these marks, which fits very nicely with the autoclave. And then we have here a hole where we can insert this tap tool. And then we tighten it as much as we can, or about one eighth. Now the assembly is ready to go inside the furnace for a chemical reaction. What happens inside the furnace is basically that we build up pressure. So here we have a pressure, temperature axis, and then different filling fractions. So I was, as I was telling you before, we can only fill this 50% um, in, void in order to avoid too high a pressure buildup. So once the reaction is done, everything has to take place in the reverse order. So you put the autoclave which has been cooled. You can never open the autoclave while hot because then the pressure is still high. So you put the, the autoclave back in the holder. You take the, the tap tool, insert it, and then untighten. And then you can basically screw the lid off. And in this way, you can access the sample inside. So actually, the 
lit and the body has a specific number which can be hard to see but here it says number 13 and likewise on the body here you see 13 and these two always have to go together so this is actually a pair and they should not be mixed now that I've taken the lid off I can take this insert out and then by pushing my finger at the bottom I can remove the burst diaphragm and the corrosion foil check that they are fine that they are intact then I can take off the lid push out the Teflon body and then I can basically take uh, my sample so this was a short demonstration of how to use autoclaves